We'll call the meeting to order. It is 134. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Okay, uh, Christina Duarte. Present. JJ Gomez. Not present. Federico Isondo. Present. Viviana Frank. Present. Roberto Gonzalez. Present. Valerie Gonzalez. Present. Ruby Raquel. Not present. Nidia Robles. Not present. Francisco Reyes. Present. Uh, Myra Hernandez. Not present. So we are six, and that constitutes quorum. So I just want to uh, first start by saying that um, we'll go to public comments in a minute, and I'll read it. But we didn't get the the agenda until yesterday. So um, I understand there were other people who were interested in coming, but they didn't weren't able to because they they just didn't think there was going to be a meeting. But um, so we have to fix all of these little glitches and make sure that, like for instance, next month is going to be the same time, right? Uh, Thursdays, 1.30, um, second Thursday of the month. So the dates change a little bit. I think so we're the third, there. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Third Thursday. Um, are we in the third Thursday of the month? Wow. It, um, okay. Started on the first. All right. Um, anyway, so that like we can mark our calendar calendars unless so for sure it's going to happen next month. Um, third yeah. Thursday, one thirty. And then we sent out a calendar reminder since now with all of the, the maybe all the meetings that way it's already in our calendar because yeah. it just popped yeah. up right. Yeah, yeah. That so that it yeah, it just popped up unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so let me read public comments. Um, citizens are required to notify members of their intent to comment prior to pub public comments. Citizens, sorry, I'm, I'm a little off, I was sick. Uh, comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. No more than three persons will be allowed to speak on any side of an issue should there be more than three people who wish to speak on a particular issue, they need to select not more than three representatives to speak for them. And the presiding officer may limit the public comments further in the interest of an orderly meeting. Speakers may not pass their minutes to any other speaker. Comments should be relevant to city business and delivered in a professional manner. No derogatory remarks will be permitted. Um, nobody signed up for public comments, I'm assuming. Okay. Um, moving on to interim president report. Um, so, good news. Um, the very best news that this organization has gotten, I think, is that we're going to have a three-year contract. Mm -hmm. It's going to be um, $160,000 for each year. And um, they heard our voices collectively on this um, issue of building capacity for this organization, which is created by the city to do the, the purpose and of, of our bylaws. And so um, I think finally it was understood that, you know, this isn't just a typical nonprofit and uh, that it has, uh, it's basically a development authority for, for what um, a city deems important to do. Um, and it allows to function as a public entity and a nonprofit at the same time to be able to accomplish that purpose. Um, there are caveats to that money. Uh, it has to do with um, obviously very important performance measures, which I think in spite of the low, low uh, budgets that we had in the past, we did accomplish a lot, um, but uh, 
the measures weren't really um, provided to the city. There's a lot of things that we need to do to become the organization that the bylaws um, require us to belong to, to be as also a local government corporation, which means we have to, you know, um, go to council for approval of who sits on the board once those uh, once those positions are up, once the people have served. So that'll be coming up. Um, any bylaws amendments that I think the city manager would like to look at. Um, that would be coming up. And also, the main caveat on that money is that we're taking over the site where we will be responsible for the maintenance um, of the entire site. Uh, Parks and Rec will not be going to the site anymore. Um, there is money for that in, the, uh, in, um, in talking to Jose, uh, the amount, and we're going to have to pay for water and electricity and that kind of stuff. Um, we, the building itself is not habitable on the second floor, so we're only going to be taking the first floor and they're going to do a walkthrough with us before the permanent agreement is done so that we can go through everything. We're going to have to find out what works and what doesn't work because they've agreed to repair uh, everything. Uh, they're still responsible for the structure and for main things, but but um, we're pretty much saying we're, we're taking care of this place. The good thing about it is that um, as a local government corporation, you're able to raise funds um, to maintain and do things to a building that's publicly owned. It's not doesn't have to just be the city that does it. So, um, and there are grants um, or funding opportunities for those kinds of things. The best thing is building capacity. We're going to be able to hire a program uh, manager. We're um, putting together a, um, a job description for that position. It's going to have to be public notice. It's a requirement that we function just like any other public entity. So it has to be put out there. Um, and then plus, of course, um, the position that um, uh, Jose has. These are two different, very different positions. Um, one is more like a facilities uh, uh, manager, understands all the, the agricultural aspect of this, and then this other position is going to be more program. Uh, we're going to have to have, we're going to be, uh, we have to, have to do an audit. We have, there's all these things that come. We're growing up now. <laughs> so, yeah. so we have to have, uh, you know, our uh, accountant in place. And, you know, uh, anyways, this is a huge hurdle. Um, and I mean, I think this organization is going to do some really amazing game-changing type of things, except with a capacity building that we can do with these two monies. So, I think that's it for me on that one. Very good. Any questions? No? Okay. Um, quiet. Secretary of Reports. <laughs> uh, so, I actually have a two uh, meeting minutes to present, so um, if you look at the first one, it's from our last meeting. Um, there was, we had a lot of uh, motions. We, the meeting prior to that, um, we didn't have quorum, but I still have minutes that need to be approved. Um, and then we also, um, just to give you all a recap of our last meeting, we did approve the board to get the insurance that's being required of us from the lease agreement. And I can go over 
an update on that uh, once we get further down our agenda. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, like the main parts of that meeting were the insurance policies and the lease agreement. And yeah, so if y'all want to take a look, um, just to verify that the information is correct, then I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. And if um, anybody wants a second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, so then um, the other meeting minutes, uh, which are behind that one, that one's from our um, June meeting on the 20th. So the previous version, I forgot to, um, I just you know copied it over, but since there was no quorum, we couldn't vote on anything, so it's basically just a uh, blank meetings, minutes meeting. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as of uh, from 6 2024. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, for the Secretary's report. Like I said, um, we'll talk more about the insurances and the um, agenda item. That's it for me. Well, Jose's not here, he's ill, so we'll skip to, um, uh, well, let me just say that Jose um, saw uh, the city councilwoman for the district, either that, they, they finished a mural over there at Canseco House. Anyways, uh, at, at that event, um, the councilwoman told Jose that as soon as all of this gets ironed out, that she has some uh, funds that she's going to provide for the water station and other things on the outside there that they've been at, that he's been asking for. And so um, I know that he was probably going to the rest. I, I don't know. I know that uh, there was an event that he had to cancel because he got COVID. Everybody seems to be getting it these days. No, I'm sorry, he has COVID. That's why he's not here. Uh -huh. <laughs> he has COVID. That's why he's not here. Yeah. So, um, treasure. <clears throat> treasure. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Um, okay, from June uh, through current day, so all of June, July through uh, current August. Our expenses have been um, $9,615.40 for the executive director. It was a $384.10 reimbursal to the executive director for, uh, that was broken up in $30 for a chair rental for an event, $54.10 for supplies, and $300 for help. Um, we are going to have to talk with, uh, um, I guess the account on how, because I don't know how that kind of uh, breaks down because he he's I mean he hires he finds these people to help him mm -hmm. and it's typically in the summer where there's no volunteers because it's so hot mm -hmm. but he needs some help to go out and help straighten out the garden so that's where where that comes from um, and that typically happens like around July when he has to do that. Um, it was a $908 uh, expenditure for TML. Uh, that was an increase of about $720 compared to last year. And um, that's it. And currently we have $29,724.68. Uh, and that includes the money that has come in from the grants? That's it? For yes. Those on yes, separate? that includes. That, that's all. Yeah. All in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'm sorry, I skipped. I always skip for some reason. I always go to. I have a so, question. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, going back towards like the. The rental agreement. So, if 
the rental agreements from the entire property, what does that do to the city's ability to still use some of that property? Like I know that, that down in Rolando had a piece there that he was growing for the veterans. Does he get does he still get to do that? I would say, look, I, have you ever seen it? Because it really is. <laughs> I don't know, but I know that he goes. I know, you know he goes. he's very good. Right. He's got a green thumb. Um, I, you know, all of that will get ironed out. I think as long as you know, there's a communication, which there right. seems to be with. Well, the same because we're going to be paying for the water and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. Um, we are paying for the water, but these, it's really, what's happening is that they're providing us the funds okay. so that we can pay for these things. Um, so, um, it's part of the capacity building part of this, but they want us to function as if it's, it's not a bad idea to, to do that because, um, I don't want to get into it too far but it's like a, um, from a from the ability to get funds to do uh, the redevelopment of this project into a, a real center for urban agriculture and sustainability where it becomes like a, a place where people go and find you know from, from you know and, and all those things that that we're supposed to be doing in the in the bylaws. You can go there, learn, participate. You know, I, I realize these are you know probably five years down the line. It could be sooner. It all depends on which grant we're able to go to. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I get grant. Hey, this would be great for LCUAS to do this or to that, but we just don't have the capacity. And so now we will. Uh, but uh, you know, I think uh, I think his whatever he's doing there, he has he's very diligent. He goes there, and he and he's been helpful, and he has an incredible green thumb. <laughs> so I think Texas AgriLife um, did uh, soil samples, and this came out the healthiest. Yeah. It was interesting. I bet it'll fly. I think he's yeah, you know he has a he has he definitely has a he has it. Anyways, but it's like some people. My son, sorry, I don't. But I mean, he walks and like shoots come out of the ground. You know, I don't have a green thumb. But it's just that's the way some people are. They have that ability. I don't know why. Anyway, so um, shall so, so we? Um, well, we don't have anything for executive session unless anybody needs to go. Okay. Um, moving on to um, updates for the board member renewal. Well, now it's, we're going to have to really think about it. And I know that we did a, a committee. Um, so we're going to have to like figure out with the city manager how he wants to, because part of the board is city positions, part of the board is citizen positions, but they're all seats. So um, I think we're going to have to sit with him and find out where he, he's at on that. And, uh, and that should happen in the next two to three weeks. I mean, I'm hoping your insurance, right, you're coming up next? Yeah, after the food policy. So, okay. Why don't I hold on to what I'm saying so that we can go to the food policy council update? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have anything? I do. So we're securing the location. I'm pending Myra's response to see what date time you can service us if they can. If not, we also have the option of the main branch library, which we did last year. Um, so we have both those options. It just depends on the date. For what? You didn't mention for what it was. For the symposium. Uh, for the set symposium that we did last year, it'd be the same run through unless you guys would like to do something else. 
there's still plenty of capacity. I know you've joined the committee, Christina, um, for the rest of you to maybe see where you fit in and how we can move that forward. Or if you don't want to do the same sort of format that we did last year, we can do something else different. I know I've proposed a few ideas, but I really want you guys to sort of steer me in the way you'd like to see that go. Um, we are set to do something for September that is very short so I was hoping to see if you guys were considering maybe pushing it forward a few months because we've had a lot of stuff with this LCUAS lease thing that I think it's taken the capacity for that to do this so opening the floor for you guys' feedback so right now it's scheduled for what September so last week of September which would be the 22nd I believe was what we checked like a little over a month there very little time. Mm -hmm. That's very little time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Planning, so marketing. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Um, hopefully, the insurance will be taken care of by this point. But um, I mean, another option that we can do, maybe not, maybe it's too short notice to do it this year. But it would be nice to have like an event at the garden. Like and I we do have the first floor as well, um, but I mean in terms of the venue, I think um, time of use sounds ideal. Mm -hmm. um, I think the public library is a good second option. Uh, the college also has a lot of space. Okay. Um, I can you do, you that that do they have like an event? Yeah. Who? The college. Cool. Cool. And do they charge for like hosting an event? Let me. Work by magic. Okay. And then in terms of the date, I mean I think pushing it out a little bit seems more realistic, but um, I mean in terms of the success of the event, but mm -hmm. I don't know what you all think. Right. What's the current date? September. September. The last yeah. kind of like a month. Well, I mean we thought we were gonna be what, September eighth? No, the last week of September, right? Yes. It could possibly work. I mean, we put together events, right? We do it all the time. Um, it's just like we would have to move on it next week, have a flyer ready, you know. Do we have a keynote speaker already? No, it's not like last year. Oh, it was going to be like a forum, right? More of a forum this year. Okay. That's what we talked about, though. Yeah, I remember. So some of the same speakers that we had last year, is that what we're thinking? Well, that or we could switch it up. Like I said, I was thinking maybe focusing it with like you guys. Maybe we can have like a whole WIC segment, just sort of making it more approachable. I think last year we had a great format, but if we were to do it in the time that we have, it'd be something way more casual. Where that's why I was saying maybe just have those set organizations or people that are in that sector doing that work to sort of explain to people like a teachable moment where you can come up to a table and they tell you what they do, how they do it, and if they have further questions, if they take that you know however they do we have an activity that sort of centralizes everything so then that way it's consistent but like you said yeah be way more casual well um i guess my only comment on this is, is uh you know we we we've gone through a lot in the last couple of months trying to Right the ship, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and we, we, I mean, if, I think what the next, um, like if we can push it off to November, and, and if it's possible to do something in November, like find, squeeze it in in the middle of the week sometime or something like that. Because I do think we should put something on really good. Since since it's like we're we're now formal we're now you know hopefully we'll have somebody by then um, I and I think that that can help facilitate all of this um, the first time we put this together we had an excellent facilitator uh, that um, you know ended up moving to San Antonio. Um, not away from us. She it works in Able City now, but she started in City Bakery. Uh, but um, I mean, we just need somebody who's like just you know that's all they're doing, mm -hmm. and it takes a long takes a it, it, it's a lot. 
So um, for just for just that thing, so we could like get either a strong group uh, from the Food Policy Council committed to meeting, which happened the last time, and there was a lot of a lot of energy around it. Um, you know, but we need we need somebody who's just on top of that. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a lot. But I don't know. I mean, I think there's a way of doing it more simply, and um, but we still, I think, we did a or something at at like um, we've done something at LC um, in that room, that economic the, development yeah, okay. room. Yeah, we've done a couple events there that were really good. One was the summit for downtown. The other one was actually when we started the the whole work uh, food. A healthy food system plan. I remember that. Um, and it was really successful. The other one is um, is at Texas A&M University. The there's the small theater there. Uh, not the bigger one. Not where the performances are, but there's a smaller one. Um, I forget the rooms. And it's the one long one. Yeah, it's in there. It's one oh, long yeah. one. It's a long one that's in there. Yeah. Anyway, so that that was really great. Um, it was packed, and there was like a keynote speaker, and we had, you know, like a panel, and it was all done. And that, that's really simple, but we need to get these strong speakers to come in, and that would take time because they're probably forget November, December, who knows, but. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like um, yeah. maybe having a list of speakers and then throwing out some dates and seeing what we get back. Mm -hmm. But I think that will be another um, like uh, a key factor in the date. So Mark Winnie uh, and Susie Marshall. I think I already said this the last meeting. My head is fuzzy, but um, he's. He's coming back as part of something that is happening in a La Azteca neighborhood. Um, we, uh, there is a way to do something really good. And, you know, the work that's happening in El Azteca, put a panel discussion around that, that would be really good too, because there's a lot of great things happening because of MHM there. And uh, some of the actual people who live there can actually speak to what's going on and uh that's that's that, i don't know what you all think but do you want to explore you want to explore something for october november <laughs> november we do this i would say i would recommend early november uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah mid to late october to early november yeah yeah because after, you know, after the second week of November, it's mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, so we're thinking the second week of November. Yeah, I would steer clear from October. I just feel like there's always a lot of other things going on that tend to distract people from this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that first week of November would be the best. So we'll shoot for that. Let me go ahead and pull up a calendar real quick while I have you guys. November. Is there a holiday? There is on November. Day. Day. There's there election is. day on the 5th. So that's happening. So I'm going to keep note of. The next week after that would be the week of the 11th through the 15th. Um, there's Veterans Day on that Monday. Do people yeah. usually have off on mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, well, it depends. Yeah. 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 Okay. The city does. Either. The city does. So I would say that. before Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. So then it would be that possible week of the 11th of the 15th, which would have that Monday off. Something to consider. So you, would you guys think during the week? I thought Sunday would be a good day, but that's just... What day? Sundays. No. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I think Sunday. Day. Yeah, I think <laughs> Sunday is a lot like family and okay. yeah. Maybe oh. a Saturday, but okay. And I'm I know I'm new to this, what but day? if our focus is it more to push the Canseco House and like would it be good to have like an event there like under a large tent where we could cook you know like a cooking the weather, the weather's nicer, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I don't I'm just saying like if, if this is where is this where the money's going, the hundred and sixty thousand that you get plus, yearly, yeah. is it going towards that? Well plus, it's going towards not the building. Not the building, not the but I'm saying like for the garden. It's for capacity building. 
it's for those things are really nice because during that time there's a lot growing there's a lot of harvest right yeah so it, 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 the, the gardens in there a lot nicer well i mean there'll be stuff coming yeah. up in november like there will be but is that the only thing or should it be two things it could be two things it could be one one day one day yeah and day I, day or you can do or you can do <laughs> you're on the committee yeah. <laughs> 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 That's why I would you suggest these Sundays to make it like a day that people can actually go to. So then if we have two activities that then kind of cater to different schedules, because not everybody's always available, right? During the week, and you have that nine to five sort so of thing. What if you did like a four to six? Well, no, it gets dark in November already. Just kidding. I was thinking of having it the same. But that's fine. Yeah, yeah you can have pretty lights yeah. out and it could be like a. I mean, can we get lights out? Was what was your idea? Finish it out. I was thinking of yeah, something yeah. where we meet at the library, have, you know, panel, invite people, and then it'd be like, hey, we'll come on over, you know, mm -hmm. right after this, and we're going to meet here to do, um, I, I don't know, demos in the garden, food cooking demos with veggies that are grown. A community oh. table. That's what yeah. I mentioned. Yeah. That's yeah. That's 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 the that's, perfect place. That would be perfect. But yeah. honestly, like I'll tell you, just me personally, like I'm like, if we're gonna meet somewhere and yeah. we're gonna go out, I'm gonna be like, see, right? right. Yeah. Like, that, that I think it should work. be like maybe One a little longer year. event where you can do like a tour of the garden. By then, like they said, like, but it needs to. And, and then, then do area. the community table, like all there. Like, but it's because there's not space to to host a fair, well, like a, a no. There's fair no space for like. A, like there's no indoor building where people can get like a rent like a large tent. But I don't even know if you can see that. The large tent takes up like a large tent. Yes. Yes. But there is there like a parking area? Well, I'm going to have to have like, okay, how many people did you get at the last event? Like 70, right? Well, 70 participants at the food town? Oh, no, I was. It, yeah, it was, a, a it was all different, mm -hmm. but, but seventy. When the actual the there was like ten tables with like eight people. What is that? 80? Eighty. Okay, so eighty people for the for the uh, de deconstruct the taco. Yeah, I remember that one. Me, me, that was. Fun. I was there with you, Icy. Yeah, that, that yeah. was fun. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so yeah, that was the workshop. Mm -hmm. It took a lot. But this wouldn't be a workshop, right? Would it would be, be more like a community event. Why don't, yeah, why don't we shut it down the that? street? Yeah, that we can. Not, not Guadalupe, but that other one that runs, you know, next to it. Yeah, and we can do the community. Is that, is that just one event there and one event. that's what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. I think that would make sense, like one event there. Like a block party yeah. slash community table. Can we invite, we door knock and invite all the residents that live around the area to come and learn about the garden that's right in their backyard. Yeah. I like a that different area. approach. I mean, yes, yeah, very different. But that would have to do it on Saturday. So Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Or Friday, 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 Friday evening. Friday evening. Yeah. Yeah. All the council members do their events. Okay, so how is that a symposium on time? How are we going to like put the, the part out where like a speaker comes and speak on what, what it's about? Well, we've done that before. Um, so, we, if an example, we just had a partnership, our Hep C program with Dr. Uh, Garza. Mm. And is that his name? Zuniga. Zuniga. Garza Zuniga. And we had the mayor come and say a few words and read a proclamation. And so, we could still do that there. It's just not going to be, you know, a very long speech. Mm -hmm. It's going to be just what we're there for, what the purpose is. And we're just going to do the garden, do the cooking demos, and have our. Potluck of community. The food it could work. That said, something different. Um, yeah, I think we, we should definitely decide this when I says here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna come in. Well, 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 Pretty mm -hmm. regularly. Yes. So um, we like. See, I mean, you have way too much to do over there, so you can't be doing two of them. So um, we uh, and are practically overlapping in terms of timeline organizing. So 
Um, is there? Is, I mean, I can, you know I can handle doing meeting notes and all of that stuff and delegating from city makery, but um, in terms of like actually making all the phone calls or getting all the sponsors together because we're going to have to go out for some sponsorship on this. You know, we're going to need help. Is that something that the people here are willing yes. to help on? I mean, you know. I would. I just I have two conferences in November. See? <laughs> so, but I can help all the way up. Can we push it to the last week of, of October? Do you think people will go on Halloween? There's so many, like, the different retreats and, like, that's the hardest part of it. What if we do a pumpkin patch? Does or we already do that. Well, 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 why, don't, why don't we do it then? The people will really come. They're always looking for pumpkin, pumpkin patches to take pictures in. in. It's a great way to get people to visit well, the garden. Like when, yeah, like, we'll need yeah. more pumpkins. Yeah, we'll need more pumpkins. Do you know the date? There was not enough pumpkins. 18? There was not enough pumpkins yet. It's fine. We don't have to do it the week Oh, we needed more. It can be the 18th. It can be the 18th. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that week of Halloween. It can be the 18th. And Halloween ends on a Thursday this year. will come before. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to tie it to food in some way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Any ideas? Can we do the. It's the Food Town Laredo. So. Well, November 2nd is. Thursday. Well, we, maybe we can do a farmer's market and we can get media to get all the vendors there. She said it had to be in downtown area. Well, but if we borrow the vendors, I think we can just yeah, do it that way, right? Yeah. It wouldn't be a problem. It's so easy to say that, but people don't give up vendors list. And that's like saying, give well, me your vendor list. <laughs> 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 I think they really attended the food right? 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 People how, how to cook, cook with pumpkin, pumpkin. or how squash. Yeah, squash is that in season? Yeah. Okay. okay. When is that? October. 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 We have October. enough time, okay. and we can get with the end of October. Of when is it? When's We're it? saying the 18th, right? Or the 25th? Or the 25th? Maybe the 18th. Okay. I think we have. Something to shoot for. That's yeah. right. I mean, it's nice. It's nice weather. Yeah. You know. Somebody FaceTime us and tell them that we're planning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He says it's the last weekend of October. Last weekend. The October. last weekend of October is the twenty fifth. That's normally the puppy match. That's what he said. Oh, that's so what he already has it. Then why, why? Like just yeah, add on to it. Add on to it. Mm -hmm. And make it a bigger yeah, event. Yeah, but that needs sponsorship, and that needs, you know, because I think the sponsorship... So the, the pumpkin patch is, is in cooperation with McGruff, or used to be? It used to be. I don't think you got Crime it. Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. Last year, it didn't happen. No. We get so instead of have them set up a little backdrop, and mm -hmm. go take some photos, and then we'll have the mayor come out. There's a picture that they're going to have the pumpkin patch I spoke to her at an event last week, and she I said... I think we need to confirm that. I, I think Who's that called it? Colleen from... Crime Stoppers said that she was. She just needed to connect with Jose Luis, but he's been out with COVID, so I don't know if they've. Okay, so it's a possibility then? A very we high possibility. Tag, like, tag team it and make it a huge know. event. And we can, we can, I'm sure we can look for sponsors. I mean, Crime Stoppers with me, it's talk sponsor. on the importance of not skiing from the guard. <laughs> uh, I'm, sure the insurance, I'm sure the insurance group would like that. <laughs> I didn't hear that one. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And we can also do like a little like if we do a pumpkin carving, we can like show them how to compost that. Or yeah. And cook the pumpkin seeds. Right. And snack and okay. okay. So my only worry is that we don't have an event that like a lot of people can come and learn about what the food system is about. And I think we need to get a a a really good. Um, speaker that will come and, and and be our you know our the person who has that uh, experience with what cities do and we can and that's one night and we can do it somewhere central in Laredo where everybody can come and learn about you know from a subject matter expert what a healthy food system looks like for a city 
and why the city of Laredo, uh, like other cities, need to focus on it. And just that would be an, uh, you know, an event where we need to get a place, they come and speak, take them to dinner, and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My wheels are turning now, but no, I don't think it'll work because it's already in September. We're, uh, we're going to put together a Nash, for National Childhood Obesity Month, we're putting together an event at the Bartlett Park. We're going to have all sorts of activities for, um, I guess, children and young adults. But I don't think it. I think it'll be too soon because we're having it on the twenty seventh of September. Well, I'll see you guys should have a table or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, whatever yeah definitely. You have, whatever, whatever's available to be able to get the. But I think just somebody that can kind of bring it home in a, you know, all the sectors of what it means to have a food system in a city and why. Maybe working with Laredo College and their. What department would we reach out to and we can have we can host someone to come and speak and we can have the students from you know we're talking about their cutting yeah, the arts or maybe or even even their health students. I don't know. We can invite them to come. I know that I work really well with Miss Sylvia, she's a counselor over at Rito College and we've hosted several talks there and so so the venue just needs to be someplace where a lot of people can fit because we're going to throw it out there, right? And we're going to say this is for, we're going to invite the schools, we're going to invite whatever, what, it's for people to understand about supply stuff, chain systems and all sorts of things. And food is, so we need to find that one person. The other person that would be really great is, and I, contact but it's Linda Garza. Garza? Garza? Garza. We, we just had her come down she, for the Texas Exes. Ah, uh, to speak? She spoke to the incoming oh. freshmen. Yeah, I sent her a little message. Linda, we need your help. <laughs> well, we, you know, maybe maybe it's some, you know, kind of dovetailing that with the pumpkin thing and, you know, making it a little, you know, and kind of, this is what happens when, you know, a local person when local families get together on their recipes. <laughs> and, you know, it started with the kids were intolerant to some of the food that yeah, was an autoimmune disorder. They made food that was, they could eat, like for tortillas and stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. really 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 um, what if we do do that community table on those streets of Canseco, which is mm -hmm. between Guadalupe and the other one? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's two long tables put together and you have people eating, this is just an example, spitballing here, the pumpkin pie. And then at the end of the tables, you'll have two experts, whether that's Linda or I don't know, Mark for if he could come. It'd be at the end of the table, and then they start conversations. At some point, they move to the middle of the table and they just sort of have that conversation that you're talking about where it's connecting how the pumpkin pie got to being a pumpkin to now this pie based on all the sectors and everything that sort of ties in together. Just to talk about the food and making the food connect to the ground and that's part of the five sectors. And those experts would be at the tables answering those questions, talking real time, casual conversations, teaching people. Well, we know, interpreter. So, <laughs> I got you. I'll be running around. So, <laughs> anyways, um, well, I'm glad I got you. All right, so can we like maybe set up a time next week towards the end of the week to like Zoom? Yeah. Don't have to I can help with the uh, requests for support for the closure of the streets okay. um, and the support from parks. Because we are friends, so able to support with tents and tables and stuff. Uh, okay, fantastic. Parks. Okay. Well, Perfect. we'll get that. Are we going to do it on the 25th then? Okay. Sounds like the, the, that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. Let me check. Both dates, 18th and 25th, just to see if there's anything going on in the area. Because mm -hmm. farmers market's also on the third, right? So then, if we did the 18th, it would clash. So we the farm. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna do it on a Friday. On a Friday. Oh, right, right. You're right. Never mind. Oh, I yeah. Because the farmers market's on 19th, right? Saturday. I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Y'all keep your dates clear for September 20th. Uh, and we chan another group, another portion of that huge. Oh, organ fundraising organization, they're coming down. 
They want to do a September 20th. talk to the 20th, several members of the Food Policy Council. And I, you know, I suggested that we just get people together so that they can talk to different organizations about what they want to do. They're very impressed with how far we've gotten on, you know, just put, having a food policy council and a plan and, you know, <coughs> LCUAS. I said, well, <laughs> you know, but it's like they were very, uh, like, you know, they understood how difficult it is for, for certainly a city of our size to be able to do this. So they're working on, in different communities. And they want to do a a food scan, uh, which is basically what we kind of did when we did the five-year plan. Um, and they want to talk about SNAP and those things um, and other things. But they're, I'm assuming they're wanting to do some funding of different types of things and uh, in the food system so very nice group of people by the way very who's coming down who is they didn't specify, they didn't specify. Eli will be here for sure. Is LCUAS able to apply for those programs? LCUAS? LCUAS, I'm assuming. Yes, I think it's probably open to a lot of different. I don't know. I know that they're they're trying to concentrate in areas that already have, you know, are somewhat ensconced in this. So Laredo qualifies for that. Um, but I think they want to find out more. Like they're, you know, as we all know now, I mean, he's like at it. By the way, he's the longest serving, serving board member that we have. <laughs> like, so, I mean, uh, this is this is not. Everybody, including myself, started out thinking, "Oh, well, let's just do a farmers market." That was twelve years ago. <laughs> it was like, "Oops, no farmers." <laughs> you know, it's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Let's go by somewhere, and then all. Well, then we found out that that all the farmers that are nearby, they can only sell what they don't sell to H E B. Mm -hmm. Like they they sell second, thirds, and fourths out there, but they won't sell the stuff that they sell to the H E B. Yeah. I mean, they have their contracts, but mm -hmm. it's crazy. Anyway, they want to find out where there's land to grow on, which is a big, huge deal. You know that kind of thing, and they tend. So um, September twentieth is when they're coming. Are you? Is everybody available? It's a Friday. We should be done. So uh, that's when they're coming. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, that's going to be. Um, hopefully, maybe we can do it here. Or can we? Do, or well, actually, maybe we can do it at the Sickle House. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe good. it'll all be cleared up and we can get in there. So be that brings us to you. Yeah. He's been a really incredible trooper when it comes to the insurance. To insurance. I think he wants, he knows more about insurance now than he ever cared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good news, we already submitted everything that was required of us for the insurance. Um, you know, we're doing what's asked for us on the lease and also stuff that uh, would be helpful for the board to have um, and for the organization as a whole. Um, so all of that got submitted. Uh, we're waiting to hear back uh, and I'm sure there'll be a back and forth, uh, but hopefully, um, fingers crossed, everything goes well. Obviously, the costs are going to go up. Um, like uh, Bobby mentioned, you know, even TML is just charging more for insurance than they were the year before. So that was why there was a $700 jump. It wasn't necessarily that we changed our policy. It's just they changed their terms. And yeah, I mean, I, overall, um, it's a very uh, good step for us because, you know, we, as we're growing and scaling up, we need those additional assurances. And I was mentioning to Viviana that we um, are also going to have more responsibilities now that we're on the insurance, you know, reporting claims if there's certain weather incidents. So that's something that uh, I'm looking forward to speaking with Jose about uh, when he gets here uh, and hopefully drafting a list of 
you know, the expectations that we have, not just from the insurance, right, but from the lease agreement, because us as a board, I mean, we meet once a month and, you know, as necessary, but I, we really need somebody on the ground that can help with that. So it ties in a little bit to the new position as well. You know, we're really hoping that, you know, I know it's a lot for Jose to do all the time, so we really um, could use that other position to make sure that, um, you know, volunteers are signing waivers, volunteers are um, signing in, you know, little things like that um, that are now expected of us more. Um, um, I mean, we've always, I, I think we have had a system, but now we need to make sure we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's and making sure everything's good. But um, that's pretty much it. Uh, fortunately, uh, it looks like everything's going to um, flow smoothly. I did go over um, with the uh, insurance rep beforehand. Uh, so we sent a, a additional documentation that we're expecting for them to get back to us. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the insurance. So hopefully it doesn't, it's not a big jump. The estimate that they did give me was 2300 to a little under $5,000 for all the insurances that we need plus what you know they recommend uh, the other insurances. So any questions with that? Okay. So moving on. Um, well, we've already talked about the discussion of possible action on the execution of the lease with the city of Laredo. That's sort of been approved, but um, it has, we, we haven't taken that out because I certainly would like to be able to like, Average. well, at the same time say here's the lease and here's the insurance because okay. they want, they want the insurance so that they can give us control of the site. So, um, well that kind of has to happen and even though, like if she can just send a letter saying we're reviewing all the stuff, we're going to send you a quote in X amount of days. Yeah, okay. I'll you know, uh, that would be really helpful. Maybe we can just get started on signing the lease and that will be enough for them to open the doors for us. Um, it, moving on, is there any questions on that? Are there any questions? Okay. Um, discussion with possible action on the creation of a bylaws committee. I think that um, we, I think we settled that the last time. Do you have? The, yeah. Who so is it? I have Nidia, Christina, me, and Alina. Okay. We have a. We're, we're gonna. We'll send out uh, a meeting request at some point soon on that. Um, any other, anything else? Do we need to, does anybody need to do any other business? <laughs> no? Everybody good? Okay. Um, then I think we can adjourn. Thank you. So, uh, motion. Well, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion.